Hi, I'm Julia Bunn of The Spirited Gardener, and we're going to do some new clips for YouTube called Spirited Clips. In the Spirited Clips, we're going to be talking about how we can work with native species plants in our home gardens to make things more beautiful and to help nature have a home. That is a songbird, and this is the middle of the city of Chicago. I'm standing next to a gray dogwood, native species plant, and we have some happy songbirds in our neighborhood. You can have them in yours too. We caught up with Doug Tallamy at the Jack Pizzo and Associates 21st anniversary celebration. Jack Pizzo introduced us to Doug and he took it from there. Uh, we'll be starting here in a minute. I'd like to get everybody in and seated so we can proceed through Doug's program. You know, I was young once. I was. <laughs> And when I was young, we moved into a new development, much like many of you probably did when you were young. And that development is called Oak Park, because oaks are what the bulldozers knocked down to, to build our houses. And our house was the first house to be built on a circle, and then they built them from right to left. So the last house to be built was the one next door to us. And that means it was a vacant lot for a full year. And there was a pond on that lot. And in the spring, this is what was happening. We had toads come and start to sing. I don't remember if I knew who was who, but I knew that the little ones were hugging the big ones, and I thought that was <laughs> Then the eggs came, and I knew what was going to happen next. I wanted the polywags to come. Um, I wanted to watch Metamorphosis, and I wanted to be there the day those little teeny guys came out of the shore. And they really are little teeny guys. They are amazingly small. They start their life uh, on land. So I was there that day. They really did come hopping out. And just as they did, a bulldozer came around the corner and buried the whole pond. So that was local extinction for that toad population. It was also local extinction for the, the garter snakes that ate the toads and for the entire food web that that pond supported. And the problem is that that, that has happened in so many places since then, so many times since then, that we literally are losing the plants and animals we share the planet with. We have not thought about sharing the planet, and we haven't worried about the fact that we haven't for two reasons. First of all, we have this idea that, that nature is happy someplace else. It doesn't matter what we take for our own use, and it doesn't matter what we do with it, but nature is always happy someplace else. The reason we think that is that nature has always been happy someplace else, but now our footprint is so huge, that's just not true anymore. And the other thing is that we, most of us, particularly our political leaders, do not completely believe, or believe at all, that we need any other living species on this planet besides humans. I mean, you know, it's nice to have them around, but if they disappear, we can watch them on Channel 12, and that'll be it. <laughs> but larger animals eat insects, too, for the same reason. It's, they're great food. Foxes eat insects. I didn't know that. They do. Black bears, 23% of a black bear's diet is insects. That's a sharp shin hawk. Does it eat insects? It eats songbirds. And you say, well, there, there's, there's a bird that doesn't depend on insects. But in fact, it does, because all the songbirds that it's eating ate insects, and it's still indirectly connected to the health of the insect community in its environment. This is the group that needs insects uh, as much or more than anything, uh, our baby birds. And that's because that's a list of the bird families in North America that rear their young on insects. It's 96% of them. So I can generalize and say that this brown thrasher is not going to be able to rear its, its young if it's in a, an environment that doesn't have enough insects. And that is such an environment. Uh, a couple years ago, I decided to take a walk, and on a nice spring day, I wanted to see how far I would have to go before I could find a house that was um, landscaped 100% with non-native plants. Uh, I didn't have to go very far. This is my driveway right here, and that's, that's my neighbor's house. My neighbor has 10 acres, and that's where his plants are from. The interesting thing about my neighbor is that he's very typical. He doesn't know anything about plants. He doesn't care about plants. He just wants a pretty landscape, so he hired a landscaper and said, do it. And that's what he got. What you may not know is that's Euonymus elatus. It's highly invasive in the east. That's bred for pear, even more invasive. So he gets snookered and doesn't even know it. 